Hey there, everybody. After a uh, really long break, I'm finally back to Al explain three years of Project Ninny and my Mark V Volkswagen GTI. Uh, this has been the most maintenance free year yet, and I'm really happy about that as I've been able to drive her more than I did in the past couple of years. With how young my kids are, it's honestly been really nice to be able to just throw them in the back seat and throw them around for a little bit, <laughs> get them used to enthusiast driving. Who knows, we'll probably have a four year video and uh, you know, if we don't, then I lied, but if I do, then you know, I'm right or whatever. <laughs> I've really wanted to move on to uh, a two C convertible, honestly. The used car market is really hot right now. And if I were to get rid of this car, it's possible that I would actually get a premium over what I bought the vehicle for. But I don't think that it's worth the difference currently, specifically for the Mark V market, um, because the vehicles I am looking at getting right now, just because they're convertibles, have an even higher premium than things like hot hatchbacks do. And the second thing really making me consider uh, getting rid of Ninian is that Project Celeste entered the garage about a year ago. Um, she's obviously not a project given how low mileage she is <laughs> and how new she still is. Um, so she hasn't really given me all that much to do. The real thing is that we have two VWs in the garage and I think we need to spice things up a little bit. It's kind of funny because when I bought this car, we experimented uh, throughout the first year of you know having um, my wife drive it and get used to it and she enjoyed it so much that she was like i don't want to drive this toyota camry around <laughs> anymore but nonetheless project ninian has remained a project so we're going to start talking about that right now after these messages no, i'm just kidding uh, so the first thing that happened honestly not long after the two-year video uh, was that while I was driving the car with uh, the Stage 1 tune, I realized that uh, after replacing the flywheel that the subframe, after I had remounted it, had started shifting around. Um, fortunately, that is a very common problem with the Mark V chassis, uh, is that when you refasten the subframe after taking it down for the first time, there are a couple of bolts that have some extra wiggle room on the sides, and that causes the subframe to shift around a little bit more than usual. Um, I initially had hoped that an alignment would fix that problem, so I went and tried to get it aligned, and they said they weren't going to do it because the subframe wasn't centered. Uh, so honestly, that was a good catch and uh, made me rethink what I was originally going to do to the car, which was to put a subframe centering kit on it. So I took the subframe down again, and my Lord and Savior 034 Motorsport came through with their centering kit. Uh, we installed that, it fixed the issue, and I was able to get the car aligned. Uh, that revealed a couple of other weak components on the car that were causing wheel hop under harder acceleration. Uh, and those things were the factory engine mounts and the dog bone mount uh, up where the transmission meets the subframe. Uh, so we ended up upgrading those to, yet again, an 034 Motorsport part, the street density kit. Uh, street density engine and transmission mounts and then the 034 motorsport aluminum dog bone insert that goes where uh, the bolt meets the subframe and that really tightened things up thankfully uh, and the car uh, not only delivered power better to the ground uh, but eliminated wheel hop in most circumstances so after the subframe was centered and tightened up uh, i recognized that in corners uh, the body roll is a little bit much. Yet another thing that's been recognized by the community is something that uh, once you upgrade it will have a big effect on its performance. Uh, so I went ahead and <laughs> continued the 034 worship and put on a rear sway bar. Um, the cool thing about this rear sway bar is that uh, there are Zerk fittings underneath the uh, poly bushings where it meets up with the frame of the vehicle and you can grease those fittings on a regular basis. So along with probably every or every other oil change, I'll be able to go under there and um, keep those things lubricated so that they last as long as possible. I would also like to provide an update on the existing modifications on the vehicle. Uh, the intake has continued to make nice, fun, spinny boy noises, and the filter is obviously uh, not yet uh, up to be changed or cleaned. We drained the catch can uh, last year. Uh, there's a video for that. Uh, I guess it wasn't really last year, but I ended up posting it at the beginning of this year in January, and 
uh, what came out is what a lot of other people have reported has come out, which is, you know, gunky, watery stuff that smells like oil and has weird particulates in it. <laughs> the second time I drain the catch can, I might actually take a sample of it and send it over to a laboratory to get it analyzed and see what specific types of materials are in it to see whether it's actually having a positive impact on the engine. Um, but according to many of the reports I've seen online, I think it's doing something good. So it has stayed on there. Uh, and the last note is that it has survived through a winter um, but note that I keep the car in the garage whenever it's not, you know, out somewhere that isn't home. So that probably helped keep it from freezing over. Um, but there were a couple of instances where I did have to park it somewhere else when it was sub freezing, not sub zero, and it held up fine. So that's always good news. Although, you know, take that with a grain of salt since when you're driving it somewhere, it's hitting operating temperature anyways. And, you know, just depends on how long you're out uh, for that engine to cool down to the point where maybe the catch can could freeze over. But I don't think that was happening in my case. And lastly, uh, the RCD 340 radio that we retrofitted quite a while ago at this point is still kicking. Uh, I believe it did have a firmware update and we ran that uh, with an SD card. Um, we were able to find the software online. Uh, I downloaded it onto the card and then uploaded it into the uh, system in order to get it to update. Uh, the one thing it has resolved, or at least almost resolved, is the freezing issue in Google Maps uh, when running Android Auto. Uh, it has gotten to the point where it pretty much only freezes one out of 10 times, maybe even less, which is really great uh, for a retrofit from an international unit. Uh, not something I would expect to have that much of an improvement, but it has. The boring part is next, maintenance. Ding. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I just look really weird while I'm doing it and it's fun. <laughs> Besides the headliner repair, which went pretty well, but you know, not as well as I had hoped, but as well as I feel like it can go for a first timer, uh, there hasn't really been all that much to report on. Uh, I checked the cam follower this year and uh, nothing really crazy to speak of. Uh, pretty normal wear and tear for this here FSI engine, uh, but nothing that warrants replacement quite yet. I did buy a spare uh, so that when it does get to the point where I feel like I need to replace it, I can do it then and there. Uh, but otherwise, nothing else going on really. The dual mass flywheel, uh, we replaced that. Uh, I believe it was last year and so far it has continued to be rattle free and the transmission is shifting as happily as ever. Uh, we're, you know, getting to that 70,000 mile mark, uh, that may happen within the next year or so. Uh, and after that point, we'll be looking at our second DSG service. Uh, I don't believe that I'll make a video for that, but you know, I will document and you'll probably see something on Instagram for that. Uh, and the, the last thing uh, that I'll mention is that the intake valve cleaning that we did, uh, has worked and is still paying dividends to this day. Uh, there's still no shutter when you turn the engine off and it continues to perform as well as it did even before we put the tune on it. I may look at uh, demodding the car a little bit once I enjoy it in its ultimate state that I would like to get it to. Uh, the only two modifications I have left that I want to apply to it are the Go Fast Bits DV Plus. That's been sitting in the garage for a few months uh, and I think once I do some work on the high pressure fuel pump, which right now has a couple of brass fittings on the lower end that are leaking fuel. Uh, it seems to be a very light leak where uh, it'll go down the fitting, but it'll dry by the time it's ready to drip off of the fuel line. So it's not so bad that I have to take care of it right this second, uh, but it's leaving, you know, a little bit of a fuel smell in the garage. And uh, let's just say my wife could smell it and she doesn't like it. So uh, we're going to fix that. <laughs> um, I'm considering uh, going to a local junkyard and pulling a fuel pump from an older Audi and seeing if I can just get the fittings. Uh, and I already grabbed the rubber hose that it has along with the clamp that I broke when I <laughs> mishandled it the first time I worked on it. Little skitter in the hay. Hey guys, <laughs> it's been a while since I've sat in the passenger seat. 
uh, I came in here to talk about uh, two or three things involving the interior that I need to get fixed or want to have addressed at some point, hopefully this or early next year. Uh, first thing is the shift cover here. Uh, the super wrap that we used on the outside uh, for the main grill and the two fog light covers has held up really well. Um, I believe it's been about a year ever since we put that stuff on and it's continued to be durable and it looks exactly the way it did when I put it on. So I think we're definitely going to do the exact same thing to this shift cover. Um, take it off, peel the whatever material VW decided to put on here that's vulnerable to <laughs> fingernail polish and uh, finish it with super wrap and it'll look a lot better. Secondly, the high pressure AC line uh, affecting the air conditioning, uh, that's honestly a lie at this point. Um, I've used the AC pretty liberally over this past year and it's continued to operate as expected. Um, the noise hasn't gone away, uh, but it also hasn't gotten worse. So I think whatever the dealer did to repair the issue uh, that this car and generation was pretty much tortured with uh, has continued to be fine. Uh, so I'm not going to touch it, but, you know, I'm still keeping a close eye on it. Let's just say, you know, the threat is on the horizon. And the last thing uh, is that I ran my annual OBD-11 full scan on the vehicle about a month ago, and... Uh, we were getting a fault for an open circuit on the right bass speaker, uh, which I believe is either uh, down here on the passenger door or behind me in the back seat uh, on the you know lower side of the car. Hopefully, uh, it ends up you know just being a fluke. But if it isn't, then we may have to overhaul the entire audio system in this car and. I know it will be a job because I'm pretty sure that most of the speakers in this car are riveted to the body panels. So we'll see how that goes. I will update you probably on Instagram, uh, but if there is not anything out there on the internet for it, I haven't looked, uh, I will make a video about it. Otherwise, this interior has continued to hold up really well. Um, Obviously, like I said, this car is in a garage when it's not being used, and I think that's really helped with durability. Um, but I would probably also say that there are a couple more light creaks and rattles uh, when going at highway speeds than there were when I first bought the car. Um, and some of them are on this driver's side door panel over here. Uh, this centerpiece uh, near where the air conditioning is, you can kind of you can kind of hear that probably um it creaks around a little bit and i might get a replacement piece it's possible i broke a clip or two when i was taking it apart to put the radio in and it wasn't an issue in the beginning but in the past year or so maybe it just finally wore out to where it's starting to make noise uh but i think once we resolve those two major things this car will continue to have a creak free interior which is huge it really is a testament to VW and Audi's interior build quality. And just a couple notes on how I've been taking care of this interior. Uh, whenever I do exterior washes and I have time for the interior, I'm using, you know, Griot's interior cleaner and some Plastex uh, plastic cleaner to do the, the plastic portions. And then for the seats, I am using, I think it's Meguiar's uh, leather care, the three-in-one stuff. Uh, it's nothing crazy, but I am, you know, applying it to the seats at least once a year. I would like to do it twice a year, but, you know, time and kids and all that stuff. <sighs> it's hot! Yeah. Uh, the end. We are about to hit 65,000 miles, which is about 13,000 miles higher than when I bought this car. At three years, obviously, as you can tell, that's not daily driver levels, but it's, I think, proving that I'm continuing to drive the car more and more as the years go on, and I think once the miles start getting closer to a daily driver number is when I will consider making the fun car a full-on fun car. Even though I'm tempted to get something that's a little bit more... Uh, exciting in different ways. Um, I've continued to enjoy this Mark V GTI, I think, for most of what it's worth, and 
I think I'm using it for what it was designed to be used for, which is, you know, a, a combination of everything. I think this car just does everything better than average. It would be really hard to say goodbye right now. Um, we'll see what this next year holds, but, you know, for now, I think I'm going to be holding on to Ninian throughout the market volatility, so to speak. Uh, and with that, I will see you all in future videos, and I hope you all are doing good. I'm happy to be back. Bye-bye.